As a partner expanding on scale, you must ensure that your API integration runs as smoothly as possible. Otherwise, it may result in a negative experience for your end users. In this module, you will learn how to build efficient integrations and handle rate limiting to preserve underlying services and resources. A rate limit is the number of API calls a developer app or user can make within a given time period. If this limit, CPU, or total time limits are exceeded, the developer app or user will be throttled and API requests will fail and return an error. The error will only apply to API calls, meaning that all manual operations within our user interfaces will still be possible. It is worth clarifying what comprises an API call and what counts towards rate limits. When working with our APIs, you can make a single API request by specifying multiple IDs. Each ID is individually counted as one API call. Each call counts towards rate limits, not just the number of API requests. Though this may be the case, it is still highly recommended to specify multiple IDs in one request, as it can significantly reduce complexity when working with our APIs. All API requests are subject to rate limits, but they are set by different rate limit standards. For example, Graph API and some Instagram APIs are subject to platform rate limits. Messenger API and WhatsApp Business API and most of the marketing APIs are subject to business use case rate limits. Whilst Pages API are subject to either platform or business use case rate limits, depending on the token used in the request. Let's look at some examples of the most popular marketing APIs. Requests made to the Insights, Ads, and Audiences APIs count towards a rolling one-hour window and are set on an ad account basis. The rate limits are calculated as displayed. The number of active ads relate to those currently running per ad account. User errors are the number of errors received when calling the API. It is important to monitor rate limits when working with our APIs. Statistics on real-time rate limits can be pulled using the X Business Use Case Usage HTTP header. For each business object ID, you will obtain information about the type of rate limit logic being applied, the percentage of calls made by your developer app over a rolling one-hour period, the percentage of the total CPU time that has been used to process the request. When total CPU time reaches 100, calls may be throttled. The percentage of time the request takes to process in total. Similarly, when total time reaches 100, calls may be throttled. And lastly, the time in minutes to regain access. The header may return up to 32 objects in one call. Once a rate limit has been reached, any subsequent request will fail and the API will return an error. This error will persist until enough time has passed for the call count to drop below the limit, thus regaining access. Any additional calls, including calls resulting in error, will continue counting towards the call limit. If applicable, you may switch to other ad accounts and resume later, as the rate limits are calculated on a per ad account basis. As a partner, you should follow these best practices to help build efficient integrations and avoid hitting rate limits. Spread out API requests evenly between time intervals to help you avoid sending traffic in spikes. Avoid making many inefficient calls that return overlapping or duplicated data. Add a backup mechanism to slow down or pause your requests when you come close to hitting 100% utility for your integration or for your ad account. Be aware that using update operations can be more computationally expensive than create operations. If rate limits are consistently being hit, you should consider applying for advanced access to the Ads Management Standard Access feature in your developer app. This can significantly improve the limits threshold. Filters help optimize the size of data responses, which reduces the need of handling pagination. The construction of filters is simple. Specify a field or dimension you would like to filter on. Add an operator such as contain, in, greater, or less than, and provide a value that you want to filter against. Sometimes there are fields that return a large number of objects in a response. This results in high cardinality and is usually inefficient. You should consider using subfields to specify exactly what data you care about in order to receive the minimum amount of data possible. Another feature which contributes towards building efficient integrations are e-tags. e-tags help you tell if the data you are querying has changed since you last checked. Whenever you make an API call, 
The response header includes an e-tag. This is a hashed value of the data returned in the call. You would need to save this e-tag value for future reference. Next time you make the same API call, you can include the if none match request header with the e-tag value you saved. This compares the old and new e-tag values. If the old and new e-tag values have not changed, the response status code of the call will be 304 not modified and no data is returned. However, if the data has changed since your last query, the data is returned as usual with a new e-tag value. You should log this new e-tag value for any subsequent calls. While e-tags help reduce the amount of data traffic, the if none match call will still count towards rate limits for your developer app. Webhooks can also be helpful in building efficient integrations. They allow you to receive real-time HTTPS notifications of changes to specific objects. For example, you could utilize webhooks to set up notifications. If there are delivery issues with your campaign, ad set, or ad, or if a campaign, ad set, or ad changes its status. These notifications can also be used in conjunction with our APIs to make automated changes. To use webhooks, you will need to set up an endpoint on a secure HTTPS server, then add and configure webhooks in your developer app's dashboard. Once your webhooks are set up, you will receive HTTPS requests to your server when the object you subscribe to goes through the defined changes. To manipulate your ads, you can then utilize the Ad Rules API to set up ad rules to evaluate and act upon notifications in real time. Asynchronous and batch requests may also be utilized to help efficiently integrate with the marketing API. Asynchronous programming has been gaining a lot of attention in the past few years, and for good reason. Although it may be slightly more complex to execute than the traditional linear style of processing, it is much more efficient. Asynchronous programming is a type of parallel programming in which a unit of work is set to run separately from a primary application thread. When the work is complete, it notifies the main thread about completion or failure of the worker thread. There can be numerous benefits to using asynchronous requests, such as improved application performance and enhanced responsiveness. For example, in our marketing API, you can use asynchronous requests to create ads and send numerous ads requests without causing a block in your API calls. Alternatively, if you are looking to extract performance data using our Insights API, a good practice is to use asynchronous requests to query for large volumes of data to avoid your requests timing out. To further enhance asynchronous requests, you can utilize batch requests. Batching can allow you to pass instructions for several operations in a single HTTP request and execute in one go. Sometimes, operations within a request may be dependent, meaning the output of one operation may be used in the input of the next operation. Batch requests can allow you to specify dependencies between related operations. For example, when using our ads API without batching, you would need to sequentially perform one API call per object creation and figure out all the dependencies on your end. With batching, your independent operations are processed in parallel, while your dependent operations are processed sequentially. Once all operations are complete, a consolidated response is passed back to you and the HTTP connection is closed. This makes batch requests one of the most efficient ways of interacting with our marketing API. For even greater efficiency, you can make parallel batch requests using multiple processing threads. Integrating with our marketing API can offer a variety of advantages to partners and enterprises who employ them. All of these advantages generally add up to one thing, increased efficiency. Working with a large volume of data and at scale cannot be achieved without optimizing your integration. Planning your development process and implementing the best practices from this video can help you to build a robust and cost-effective solution.